The Story Keeper, instructions from an historian on where to find our history. In the jarros, she says, look in the jarros, the ones forgotten or shoved aside with a broken clay lip and color dulled by years of hard use. Search between the folds of rags, the places no one else would look, often they're there, hiding. Look in the garage, in the dark corners, sometimes they are undiscovered, silent. In the tecorucho sheds out back or dumped in the alley, wiped away from our lives for the trash to take. Others hoarded like treasures, beholder fears to reveal, wrapped in a homemade colcha in a wooden box under the bed. In the viejito's eyes, in the twilight of death, you read their secret. The eyes point you to the spot, stamp, remember on the almost forgotten box and plead with you to be the keeper of the story. Look in the places where ink does not show, in the breaking voice between the lines of a song. Our history is written in that song, written on the voice, sometimes written on the heart. Look at the hands. The way the woman crosses herself when she passes a certain feel. Everyone knows the story of what happened there late that night, 90 years ago. Everyone knows, but it is not written. The paragraphs of dangling bodies were too long, too ugly to be written. The sentences, like unfinished lives, too short to make sense. The letters of the words spelled out, distorted, incomprehensible, like mutilation of body parts that started out in belleza and truth. And look at the way she holds the masa with both hands, protecting, feeling its warmth, memorizing the moment for just a second before it's split apart into many tortillas each to go their own way, some consumed rapidly, some wasted, some disappeared, never to be seen again. In her gestures, her hesitations, her sigh of mourning, lie our history. When the father wrestles with the unwritten history, pleading to save it, speak it, bury it, singing the Indian chant of a story he will not tell his children yet. They're too young, only 10 or 16, or 36, wait, wait, he says, I fear for them to know what those hate-filled others did to my grandfather. They are too young. Perhaps I too, at only 60, am too young to know, too old to forget. Look in the footwells of our steps, the table corners rubbed smooth, the marks on the walls where we have lived, the fine, and tired stitches of the clothing sewed and mended the careful fold of the shuck on the tamal. Learn to read the eyes, the hands, the spine. You must be like a detective or a spy, subtle, unnoticed, unrelenting, for they are out there, our stories, to be read in the tracks of tears now made into wrinkles on the face in the scars we carry with pride, in the grocery list marked with crayon on a junk mail funeral home advertisement, in the Western Union telegrams of money sent home to Mexico, in the eviction notices sent people whose address has stayed the same for 150 years. You must be persistent, courageous, go quickly, urgently into the dark corners, unveil our treasures from the attic, find it, hear it, touch it, write it down. This is how we keep our history. This is also how we keep our soul.